welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing something very important that's on the lips of every reader out there. Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. We have been waiting for this for a while. It's been a long time since we've had a Sarah book because she wrapped up the last of her series and she's doing the Cassie and Anesta book that we're all very excited about. But we were excited for this. I was stalking her Pinterest boards for months. I was so ready for this. And oh my word, did she pay up. I will do a non-spoilery part of this review and then I'm gonna get into the spoilers. I'll let you know when that's happening so that if you haven't read it yet, you can leave at that point and then come back later when you're ready to chat about the emotional trauma that you're going to experience at the hands of a hardcover. Or a paperback or Kindle, whatever you do, either way, emotional trauma is coming your way. Crescent City follows Bryce. She's a young woman living in a city called, surprise surprise, Crescent City with her best friend Danica. And they are soul sisters. And then a horrifying thing happens and Danica and a bunch of their other friends are murdered. Brutally. I'm not spoiling you, I promise. It's in the blurb, you know it's coming, you do get to meet Danica at the beginning of the book, but you know from the blurb that she's not gonna stick around. Bryce then has to figure out who killed them, how they killed them, and what she's gonna do about it. There's an amazing journey for Bryce and for Danica, even though she's dead. You get to meet the most beautifully layered, complicated characters that are so obscure in the fact that you've never really met someone like them before. Going in, I had an idea of what Sarah J Maas was and what she writes and where she writes it, and it was not what I expected at all. And that made the, the first part of the book, maybe like 50 to 100 pages, a little bit slow for me. It's not set in a fantasiful world, but it also is set in a fantasiful world. Imagine you have Throne of Glass, but they have guns and cameras and like super, super techie, techie technology. That's what you have here. So it did throw me when I first got into the book. After that though, it evened out and I got comfortable in it and I could just blaze on ahead and read. If you are reading it and you're finding it slow in the beginning, push through. Trust me, it's worth it. Just push. Let's just talk for a second about the cover. Holy crap. Isn't that the most beautiful cover you've ever seen? And then they've got the art on the inside as well. And when you look at the book Nakey, it's nice and red and we've got gold on the spine. It's so beautiful. As you can see, I've made notes all through the book as I read. So I am so ready to dive into this and talk about it. So if you haven't read it and you plan to read it, now is your cue to leave and then come back later when you're ready and we'll talk. To the spoilery people, stick around because we've got so much to talk about. Bye non-spoilery people. Bye. Bye. Time to go. See you later. Okay. Spoilery people, let's talk. Oh my goodness, what? But who else is panicking? Who else is terrified? Who else thought that that ending was so bloody good that it could have been the ending to an entire bloody series because it was just so amazing and it went on and on and on and it was like, there's more, there's more, there's more. I got to the end of the stuff in the library with Micah and I was like, there's still like 200 pages left. What the hell's gonna happen? There's still, there's too much room left in the book for this to be over. There's something else horrible is gonna happen and bloody hell was I right. The sky is falling. There are portals open everywhere and there are demons coming in from hell. Oh my God. We will get to the ending, we'll talk about it later, I'm gonna start at the beginning of the book and work my way through. I made lots of notes in my notebook and on my phone, so I'm gonna be jumping between things, but let's get into it. I want to set up a shrine to how pretty it is! So like I said earlier, the start was slow for me. I did struggle to get into it at first, but once we actually reached the murder, I was in. I was committed, I wanted to know. I felt her pain and I cried for this girl that at this point I didn't even like. I did struggle to like Bryce in the beginning. But we had the same journey in growing to know her that Hunt did because she appears to be one way and then you realize she's got so much depth to her and it took Hunt a hot minute to actually figure that out. And I think that we had that same journey with him. And I think that goes to show you can't judge people just based off the first impression. By the end of the book, I really love Bryce. She is so bloody brave. Sarah did an excellent job building up the relationship between her and Damika and Connor and all of that and then tearing it all down. It was so savage and so well done. It was beautifully put together and it really broke my heart when they died. Like I knew from the blurb that they were gonna die, but then they had like hinted at something horrifying. It happened a few years ago and I thought, was that the thing where people died? 
Are we gonna get to keep Danica? 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 I can't figure out which way it's pronounced, but I might flip between the two throughout this review, so just go with it. I was actually shipping who with Connor, just based off that conversation they had in the kitchen, and then via text, I had started shipping her with Connor, even though I knew Hunt was coming into the story. But they spar off each other really nicely, and they seem like they like each other, and then BOOM! Dead. Not just dead, pulp dead. And then by the time Micah comes in and says, Oh, we need you to map out Danica's movements, and um, help us find out who killed her, without us knowing his ulterior motive, by then the stakes go from here to BOOM. And not just for Bryce, but for Hunt, because that's the point where we're over this crazy ass deal where he gets to wipe his debt! So. We start to care about this little murder bird person. Bryce clearly doesn't give a crap about him, and he doesn't give a crap about her. I love a good hate to love relationship in a book. I love seeing people realize that they were wrong and that this person who they've met is worth loving. I feel so sorry for Hunt. He lost who he believed was the love of his life for a cause he really believed in that he lost along with her. And then he became a slave! I mean, it's been a slow haul for him. He has been living in basically purgatory. We got to know them through the eyes of the other and that was just so beautifully done! All through the book I was making lists of suspects and ideas of how this could have happened. Honestly, our beautiful little Lily, our fire sprite, I'm not- I can't pronounce her name out loud so I'm just gonna call her Lily. Honestly, I suspected her when I first met her. but. My my word, I loved her. Her sacrifice when she's breaking the glass and she's saying, my friends are with me. Honestly, I started choking up and even now I feel tears coming to my eyes because that was so moving and so sad. She gave her life to give Bryce and Strinks seconds. And I feel bad that I actually suspected her of being involved in Danica's death. But when it was hinted that she and Danica didn't get along, yeah, I thought that maybe she had something to do with it. I was completely wrong. By the point we reached Declan and Flynn, I actually wrote down in my notebook, she has star magic. I was right! Her ruse for getting the Viper Queen to come out and talk to them was so clever. She didn't even tell Hunt about it, but she pulled it off seamlessly and she just keeps doing that. Everybody looks at her and underestimates her and then she whips out this awesome idea that she's already executed and has worked really well and people go, oh, wait, so you're not stupid? And she uses that kind of facade to her advantage, which again is incredibly clever. The obsidian salt and the fact of all the other salts being used for different things in magic was very clever. It's so well conceptualized. It's such a good idea. Bam! Well done, Sarah. When we get to the last paragraph of the last page of chapter 18 and it says, Interrupted only by a slitted pupil, now razor thin in the warehouse's lights, a snake's eyes. Or a viper queen's. Oh my word, I started hyperventilating. I was sitting in the car when I was reading this and I was just like, oh, I started yelling at traffic. I like the viper queen. I get a, I get a feeling she's going to be an ally for us in later books. I predicted that at some point during the book, she would need to use that obsidian salt. She wasn't just going to get it just to lure out the Viper Queen. It had to come in again. And of course it is! She freaking summons a de- basically, one of the rulers of hell. My number one suspect throughout the entire book was the Autumn King. Bryce's father had every reason to do it and we know that he's looking for the horn, which means that he probably was looking for it back then, which means that if my theory about Danica stealing it was correct, he was probably a viable suspect. I did think Micah had an ulterior motive. That guy never seemed to do anything without some kind of ulterior plan behind it. Did I think that he was the one who had done all of it and was responsible for the pack of devils dying? No. I want to know, if anybody watching this guessed it was Micah, Tell me how you figured it out. When we get to the bit of the flashback where she's thinking back to when she had to kill someone before to save herself and Danica's lives, I actually started crying in the car. For me, it stirred up those memories of Danica and just stirred up the amount of grief that she's feeling, how much she actually lost. She lost the second half of her soul. The pain that she's in just remembering that. Through reading the message feed between herself and Danica and Connor, her grief is tangible and it actually made me cry in a parking lot with people looking at me like I was some creep who cries in parking lots. I love the process of Hunt figuring out who Bryce really is and what she really stands for. But then we get to this 
If you want to turn to the top of chapter 25 and he says maybe he'd bribe her with a new pair of shoes or some purse or whatever might be enticing enough to keep her mouth shut. Hunt, you still think that little of her that you think that she will go for a purse or some shoes to cover up your horrible mistake? What the hell? You're getting to know her. She's opening up to you and you still think that you can bribe this party girl who's actually dealing with a serious amount of grief with a pair of shoes. At this point I got angry with Hunt. I wanted an apology. I was personally offended. Shoes or a purse? At least give her a book. If you want to bribe a girl, give her a book. We all know now that Briggs was innocent and we knew that probably from the point where Micah actually came to talk to them. When we actually go and talk to him in the prison that was eerie. It actually made me think of Rysan and Feyre going to talk to the bone carver in A Court of Mist and Fury. It had that same vibe of being in this foreboding, never-ending place that just swallows people whole. I feel like Briggs is gonna come into this series hard in the next book. And then my next note after that is all caps did Danica steal the horn? Well, yes, yes, she did. Did anyone else guess that? Did it? But okay, I got, I guessed that she stole the horn. I did not guess that she had had it tattooed onto Bryce's back. Did anybody else notice that she mentioned the Book of Breathing? The Book of Breathings is in the library under the antique store, which means that their worlds have to be connected. There's also a book titled The Queen of Many Faces, and that, did, did anybody else immediately go Aelin? Because she was Lillian, she was Diana, she was Selena, she was so many names. She was the Queen of Many Faces. It's about Aelin. That book is about Aelin. You cannot tell me that these worlds aren't connected. Sarah has made it so bloody obvious that you can jump from one world to another. So, we might get a mashup. I think everybody, let's sign a petition to get Sarah to have all of our characters meet each other. And I don't want fan fiction. I want canon. I want Sarah. And aside from that, the books can move. They, they try to escape. They're basically alive. And that's like the library of my dreams with books are alive. These books are alive. Um, they are alive. They just can't move. I started wondering that around page 400-ish, it says 400 on my notes, if maybe she would try to buy Hunt and free him the same way she had done for Strings. I was right about that. She tried, but she couldn't do it because bloody what's-her-face whose name I can't remember now just wasn't interested. She was a real bitch. I did wonder if Ethan was involved for a couple minutes because he was such an actual bitch to Bryce when she came to visit the wolf's den. That chick Emilia or Emily or whatever her name was, I wanted to shoot her. There were a couple of characters in this I'm just like, damn you an asshole. How could you be so cruel as to taunt somebody about the murders of her, basically her family? So when Bryce went after her for the whole croissant incident, I was so bloody happy. I was cheering him on. If I had pom-poms and like a cheerleading uniform, I would have put it on and gone, hunt, hunt. And then we got to chapter 45, where I accidentally looked at the last line. And you know what, you want to know what it says? You want to know what this says? Not until the crystallis crashed into him and sank its teeth into his shoulder. I had breathing issues through this book. When we were on the water with Tharian and we were looking at this drug deal and then it turns out to be Hunt. All I did for like five minutes was go, what? No, what? No, what? No. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. When she sees it, it's him and she realizes that he knew this theory that turns out to be wrong, but she believes it in that moment that Danica had done all of this and she was the actual killer. Her grief at that, at feeling like he lied to her, that he knew this, and when she screams at him, you knew, you knew, and he like breaks down, I'm so sorry, Bryce, and she says, I never want to see you again. I'm like, we've just spent like 500 pages working up this relationship. You can't tear it apart now. I knew Danica didn't do it. She couldn't have done it. And I just wanted to scream at them. You're wrong. It wasn't Danica. It wasn't her. Hunt, how could you let this happen? He wanted so desperately to escape and he did everything that he could to do it. Imagine getting to that point where you would be willing to do this horrifying, terrifying thing to free yourself. You're that desperate 
that you feel that that's your only option. And then when she shows up and tries to buy him back to free him and offers her amulet as well, which is basically the only protection she has, I started bawling my eyes out. I was actually struggling to see the pages. And then we move on to the summit. They announce that Micah is not going to be there for one of the days. And honestly, I did go... Why? And then he walks into the freaking antique shop and it's just like... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it was Micah? It was Micah? And we've got the perfect villain monologue from him where he explains all of his stuff. And then Bryce's boss flicks it onto the screen so that everyone at the summit can see what's going on in there. And they're just watching while Bryce is being, like, tortured by... Micah! The truth is out. Like, he cannot hide it. He killed the pack of devils. He's, he's responsible for all of this horrible stuff that's happened. It was entirely him. And no one can deny it. They know. They have him confessing on tape. And she's just trying to buy time to survive and to help Lily and Strinx and get them out of there. And then the worst of the worst happens. And he picks up Strinx and drops him in the tank. I couldn't handle it. I was screaming. The whole book I had kind of been picturing Srinx to look like a lion version of my dog. And then I'm picturing this poor little chimera in the water trying so hard to swim with this horrifying demon from the depths creature smiling. And then when she jumps in the tank and she's trying so hard to get him out and this horrifying demon creature comes at her and then one of it was at Flynn who said this is her ordeal. I was just like my whole body froze. I'm getting goosebumps now. I thought that he was a goner. Strengths, I thought he was a goner. I thought he was gonna die. And then Lily? And then Bryce revealing that she bought her and freed her so that she couldn't be a slave anymore. And she says, I know, I looked in your desk. At least that horrible demon nook thing died with her. She gave her life that was finally hers away to give her friends an extra 10 seconds and that 10 seconds was everything they needed by the time we get to this beautiful page where that bullet goes through micah's head i was screaming there was no way in hell she could have ever gotten away from him he had to die there was no other way around it he would have hunted her forever and the fact that she then went up and got that gun that we had been told about in like chapter one with the bullet that says remember that you will die on it and fires it into his head with those 10 seconds that lily gave her was the most incredible thing I have ever seen. To top it off, it is being watched five hours away by the entire summit. And then she pulls out Danica's sword and she sliced him to bits again with everyone watching, gobsmacked, jaws dropped, eyes wide. They cannot believe what they're seeing, but it's true. And then she puts the cherry on top of the cake by getting out the vacuum cleaner. And hoovering his ashes into the dust bag. What a boss. What an actual boss. While she was vacuuming up that asshole's ashes, the names of the pack of devils along with Lily just started running through my head. And it was just like, this is justice. And then we step out the door and quite literally all hell has broken loose. That phone call between Bryce and Hunt when everyone in there can hear it and she's saying goodbye and she's telling everybody how much she loves them and she talks about how she's so grateful that Juniper stopped her from jumping off the roof that night and that she loves Hunt and that she forgives her brother and to tell her mom and Randall how important they are to her. At that point, I broke down entirely. Any composure that I managed to keep throughout that climax was gone. And then she does it. She pulls out a star. Her star-born fae magic that she has kept secret for so many years. She pulls it out and uses it 
to seal this portal to hell. And she realizes she could do this with all the other portals. But she has exhausted her magic. And the only thing she can do to bring enough first light to stop this horrifying thing from taking over her city is to make the drop. And then that little light goes on and you hear Danica say, light it up. <gasps> goosebumps! Goosebumps! I predicted at the beginning of the book that all of that magic that was being zapped out of people when they touched the thing would be useful to us somehow and I was right! I was right! It's now a part of Bryce! And she keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and they're watching on the screen with the summit thing that she's going so damn far and she passes the autumn King. As she's dropping, she's with Danica and she's talking to her and she's telling her how much she loves her and that she misses her and that she doesn't want to go back. And Danica tells her, you have something to live for now. This, you, you, you haven't understood. This isn't about me. This is about life. It's worth living. Through love all is possible and you love Hunt. She actually gives her essence, the last of her soul, up to just give Bryce that little push off the ground she needs to actually ascend. Was there ever a more beautiful show of friendship? It was sensational. That climax was the climax to end all. It was like reading the finale of a series. Like you expect the finale of a series to be huge and dramatic. And this was that. This is only the first book in the series. We don't know how many books we're gonna get yet. I have a feeling it's gonna be like four to five. I hope we visit some of the other houses in the rest of the books. I wanna meet more characters. I wanna get to know more about the hellish realms. The demon god who she summoned, who shows up as a cat as well. We've got some serious stuff coming with him. Sarah has a lot to live up to in her next book because she set the bar very high. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. Yes, the beginning was slow, but that ending, made up for it tenfold. Tell me what your thoughts were, if you liked it, if you didn't, what you liked and what you didn't, and if you were as astounded with that ending as I was. Next week we're going to be sorting Disney princesses into their Hogwarts houses, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Erin, I make videos weekly on this channel. Please remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you all again next week. Bye!